Welcome back to another web dev podcast episode where we help aspiring developers get jobs and junior developers grow. In this episode, I'm going to be jumping into what I love and hate about live coding. I've been live coding for seven, eight years now, something like that. Ever since I was trying to become a developer, I started live coding on Twitch a long time ago and I've done it on and off. And, you know, I've, I've gotten to where I've, I've averaged maybe about like 60 concurrent viewers with live coding. It's not a lot um, compared to what some people are at now, but it, you know, it keeps chat pretty active with live coding. That's one thing that you have to realize is when you are live coding and when you are engaging with chat and you're talking with people, because a lot of people come in, they want to talk with you and they're bored or they're lonely or they want to get your insight or they want to give their insight, right? Um, I think a lot of successful live coders, they engage with chat and that's a double-edged sword because that's how you grow your stream. You have meaningful conversations with people. You get to know them, they get to know you and you kind of turn it into a TV show, right? Uh, you can, I, I would highly suggest getting a schedule, sticking with that. If it's too difficult to stick with the schedule, just hop on when you can. But ultimately, like try to stick with a schedule at least a few days a week and just create this expectation that you're gonna go live and people will actually block out time on their calendars to go live with you, right? They'll join your chat and they'll see what's going on. And sometimes they'll just put you in the background. Actually, most people, they just put you in the background and they just do other stuff, they'll code. It's kind of like they have someone to code with them. And, you know, that's a really cool feeling because becoming a developer can be very lonely at times, especially with the self-taught path. And so when I first started out, I actually knew no other developers. And for a long time, I was just learning on my own and I didn't have anyone to toss ideas out to. I had no one to check my code. And I didn't even know if I was growing in the right direction as a developer. I didn't know if I was building the right things. I didn't know if I was learning the right things. And so there's, um, there's a lot of good intention that can come from uh, people giving unsolicited feedback in your live coding streams. When you're first starting out, I think that can be helpful at times and it can be destructive at times. So let me explain. When you're starting out, you can get stuck and be stuck for a very long time. If you're not live coding, you just have to figure it out. And that can take a lot longer than it needs to versus someone at least giving you a little nudge in the right direction in your chat. So the problem is when people give unsolicited feedback way too quickly, what I see from a lot of uh, developers on Twitch that are just starting out, they'll keep reading chat and then they'll type in the code that they're being told to type in and they'll read again. Okay, this is your solution. Okay, this is what I'm not getting. I'm gonna type this in, right? You're not really learning. And I think it's very easy as a new developer to really want to absorb what they're telling you put it into your app to make your app better to solve that problem that you've been stuck on, you know, for the past 10, 20 minutes. But in reality, you're not really growing. You're not really learning why this bug even occurred in the first place. And I see so many people that are just like, oh yeah, I get it. And they don't really get it, but they put in the code, it works, and then they move on. A lot of new developers do that. I think that's a huge mistake. Where I think unsolicited feedback is really helpful is when you've been stuck for 20, 30 minutes and you have no forward momentum, you are clueless, which often means like you got to really work on your debugging process and you really have to probably learn or relearn the fundamentals. Maybe you skipped over them that make up this concept that is causing you to get stuck. And when you are just leaning on chat to give you solutions to get out of that that hole, um, you're, you're not really identifying where you're going wrong and what you can do to improve. And good unsolicited feedback is feedback that kind of just nudges you in the right direction. Think about this concept or what do you think about like these lines? Like how do you interpret that? And, you know, they kind of just like 
nudge you towards the right direction and give you a little bit of a stepping stone rather than the solution. That is excellent unsolicited feedback that you want. And I would be very careful about leaning on your chat too hard to build your application when you're live coding and maybe even make a rule like, hey, no unsolicited feedback unless I've been stuck for like 20 minutes or something like that. I think that's a really good rule for new developers. And when I was a new developer, I did not implement that rule. And I thought I was growing. I thought I was like, oh, this is really cool. I'm getting a lot of people in chat. They're helping me. I'm growing. I wasn't really growing. Not really. And I... I got to a point where I really lacked so much fundamental foundational knowledge where I started encountering bugs more and more and more. And I'm like, okay, it's, I have chat and they kind of help me. And then I think I understand, but it doesn't really sink in, but I thought it did. Right. And I just became dependent and that's what you want to avoid. Now, if you're a little bit more of an experienced developer, uh, live coding can be fun and it can be a cool way to teach and get back. Um, but you're also going to get a lot of unsolicited feedback, but often the unsolicited feedback that you get, uh, most of it's garbage. <laughs> it just is. And l let me give you a few examples. Let's say you have a full stack application and, um, like for example, you have Node.js, and you get a, a developer that comes in and just says, oh yeah, no, or applications built with Node.js are just garbage. You should, you should definitely switch to Python. You should switch to go. No understanding of what you're trying to learn, no understanding of what you're trying to do, what you're trying to build, what your project requirements are, why you chose this language. They don't give a shit. They don't like your language. They make it clear and you need to use another language. That's garbage feedback. Of course it's garbage feedback, right? And you get a lot of that. You get a lot of, especially new, uh, well, even new developers, but people pushing new technologies that are very trendy. And why aren't you using this? And it, you're going to find that that kind of conversation derails you. <laughs> and you have to go into it with the expectation that you are not going to make a lot of progress on your app. If you want to grow with live coding, typically the strategy is to engage with your chat. Um, and it's okay if you're going to grow slower, but I would, if you really want to make meaningful progress with your app, you need to focus on code. You need to get into that flow state. You need to not look at chat as much, right? And this is kind of a hard thing to do. And it's contradictory to a lot of advice that you get for growing as a streamer, but you have to decide, do I want to grow as a live streamer, as a content creator, or do I want to get this project done, but just showcase what I'm doing? You need to make that decision because I think a lot of people go into it thinking they can accomplish both. And very rarely, especially as a new streamer, you're going to accomplish that. That's a very rare occurrence. So when you dive into live coding, truly think about like what you want to get out of it, because it could be a really fun experience. You can meet a lot of cool people. You can grow your uh, community and content creation. I'm telling you, like to me, it's king for marketing. It, it, like if you really want to push out a SaaS product, you want to build momentum with it, build excitement, hype with it, live code it. That is a really cool process. And um, I've seen success in different people that have built applications that have had thousands of users to even just start because they took, you know, six months, they took a year to build this out on stream and they got a lot of a support and they just built an audience that, that was excited about what your, or what you're doing and what your product does. But more importantly, they're excited that they got to meet you, right? That that's why content creation is king of marketing. Um, because when you're, you're transparent and you share your thoughts and you connect with the people that are watching your content, they, um, you, you could build any product and you're going to have an audience that actually cares about looking into it. And so you already have an audience behind you that wants to support what you're doing. That's a phenomenal way to build kind of a SaaS product. I think that's an awesome thing to do if you are an experienced developer, you're like, I want to try to build a SaaS product and I want to build, uh, gain supplemental income, or I want to try to achieve financial freedom and eventually start my own business. Content creation is king for that. And I think you should consider that. But you have to understand that as you grow your audience, you're going to have to guard your time. You're going to have to guard your attention. It's going to be really hard to make progress if you also want to grow your audience. So just understand why you're going into it and prioritize. Set rules in your live chat, and I think it can work out really well. And keep in mind, you are 
the content creator. You, you own that channel. You can literally, if people are just being annoying with unsolicited feedback or they're being annoying and being disruptive or they're trying to be, they're parasocial or they're trying to dig into like really personal issues of yours and you're like, I'm just trying to build this project, right? You, you could just ban them. You just ban them. Like so many live streamers tolerate so much crap from viewers because they think it will kill the vibe because they banned someone and they had to be harsh. I am telling you, you want to curate your audience. You want to curate your chat because you are going to be going live every day that you've scheduled, hopefully, and you want to go live. You don't want to go live with a lack of excitement because you're like, I got to deal with these few people. No. When you find yourself avoiding live streams because you don't want to deal with a certain type of chatter, that means you need to start banning that chatter. You need to enjoy these live streams because it should be a long-term strategy. You should have fun with it. So many content creators give up because there are just certain chatters they don't want to deal with that bring them anxiety that just, or they're just annoying and they just don't want to deal with it. Ban them. I am telling you, you are going to feel at peace. When you do this and you are strict with it and you get mods that are strict with it that can actually do it for you, just ban, curate your audience, and allow people that kind of just, sometimes it's just a vibe check. Like they're just ruining the vibe. They're, or, you know, uh, they're just viewers that have a really good presence about them and they, they just make more of a positive vibe, more of a constructive vibe in a live coding stream. You're like, I want these people. You can give more attention to those people and ban people that just disrupt that. It really is that simple. And I really want to encourage people, like, if you want to ban, just ban. Um, it's going to serve your community uh, better long-term. People are actually going to appreciate that. They're going to respect that you're willing to just push people out that don't need to be there, that are just annoying, because there are a lot of live streams that keep those people in, and then you get an audience that doesn't really chat. They don't interacted to you because you have other really toxic people that might chime in. You're like, ah, oh, crap, I didn't want to hear from them. I just wanted to chat with the cool people here. I wanted to talk to the streamer, but I get this annoying person saying that like these five languages suck and you aren't a real developer if you're uh, working with these languages. It's like people are just going to leave the stream at that point. So curate your audience, ban people. And I think you're going to have a really good experience with live coding. And I think that's the key. And this is why I'm really emphasizing this. If you want to live code, it's a really cool experience. You get to learn, you get to curate a community that's perfect for you, that you vibe with, they vibe with you, and you need to moderate your community in a way that's going to set you up in the long run for success and enjoying your stream uh, for a long period of time because a lot of uh, live streamers just give up. They do, and I think it's because of this. Um, so you have to think about what you're do uh, going into live coding for, why you're even doing that versus like, solo because you can you could build out a project and make tons of progress like if you're just trying to build a SaaS product you, you could just do that if, if you're trying to go through a tutorial based project you could just do that and you're gonna make a lot more progress when you're doing it solo um and so i, I think a lot of people just they live code because it gives them motivation they wake up they're excited to engage with their audience and you need to make sure that every time that you live stream you're excited to do that if you're not you're probably going to give up like most people do so um, i think live coding is really cool i don't think it's for everyone I really don't. And you don't have to live code. If you're trying to become a developer, I think it's really, uh, it's a great idea to build and focus on your self branding. And you could do that through other forms of content and create YouTube videos and create blog articles. You could just create LinkedIn articles. You can engage with people and have meaningful discussion on LinkedIn and build connections that way. There are so many ways that you can be transparent about who you are as a developer and what you think as a developer. And, you know, what your strong opinions are and, you know, what you're excited to learn. Like, you could be transparent in other forms of content. You don't have to live code to do that because I think sometimes people or newer developers hear that, like, all of them should live code. It's a great thing to build your self-branding. Not really. I think there's – everyone has a preference for a medium, um, and you can create all sorts of content. You can even just – record audio files and create a podcast of your thoughts uh, about you growing as a developer and like some of the stuff that you struggled with and you can create a podcast full of like a hundred episodes and um, you know, self-branding is a, it's supposed to be a long-term strategy for aspiring developers, but you, you have to find the medium that works for you because if you don't, 
and you live code because someone else told you to live code, you're not going to do it long term. You are going to give up. And what was the point of that? I mean, I guess you tried it, but try a bunch of different mediums and see if it works for you because there are a lot of good strategies for aspiring developers. Just find your medium is what I'm saying. You don't have to live code, but if you want to enjoy it, curate your audience and have fun with it. And I think you're going to love it. So I don't know if anyone's tried live coding, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of curious. I feel like I do see a lot of people give up and I have my own gripes with live coding. Um, personally, I don't like a lot of unsolicited feedback. I find enjoyment in problem solving in myself. And I find that a lot of people have good intention in the chat, but I don't, I don't want their solutions. <laughs> I want to figure this out. I have fun with that. Don't take my fun away. And I like getting into a flow state, right? So, um, I don't even know if live coding is for me. I'm doing it currently, but, um, you know, like I got to make sure that it is fun for me and it is enjoyable and I'm going to enforce rules to make sure that happens. And, um, I just encourage you to do the same. You might love it. You might hate it. I think it's worth trying at least, but at the very least find your medium and be transparent about your dev process, build up that self branding, no matter what, uh, type of content you choose to create. I think it's a good strategy for almost everyone. But is live coding for you? You got to figure that out on your own. But yeah, anyways, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if you're considering it, if you're anxious about it, anything like that, let me know. All right, I'll see you in the next episode.